Let's put some stuff into context, uh, and no one can do that better uh, than my friend Mary Meeker, who's been um, putting up with me asking her to speak for about 15 years now. <laughs> Um, we go way back to a conference we used to run together called the Internet Summit uh, when I ran the industry standard. Um, but uh, Mary's going to come and talk about Internet trends, and she even promised she has a few new things that you can steal her slides from later. So, welcome, Mary Meeker. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, John and I were in the same kindergarten class, and we started doing presentations in first grade. But. Um, thank you uh, for being here. And what I'm going to do, I have 15 minutes, now I have 14 minutes, and I have 50 slides. So if anyone wants to criticize the uh, way I go through these slides, you will be, um, it will be fair that you'll be able to do that. But the slides are at morganstanley.com slash tech research in real time, John, and uh, they'll be on, the, uh, on John's website by the end of the day and on SlideShare. So if you miss something, uh, you'll be able to get it real time at morganstanley.com slash tech research. So what I'm going to do is go through these points. I'm going to talk about the, inter the mobile internet. We're going through unprecedented early stage growth. Talk about innovation taking place in the technology space. I think that's also unprecedented. Uh, online advertising may finally be entering the golden age that it should have entered a long time ago. Online commerce is something we think will ex show accelerating growth, and it's already strong, um, thanks to mobile and communications. We're seeing a share shift to sharing um, as um, was brought up earlier today from Tom. Cloud computing is finally coming into the enterprise and the technology, I'll talk about what's next, and then talk about what's going on beyond technology just for a moment because there are more things happening in the world that are hard to predict than we have probably um, seen in a long time, if not, if not ever. So with that, focusing on a lot of data, what I want to do is just provide you with a lot of context for things that are relevant for you, slides that you can take and disagree with, use as you like, uh, but also stuff that we think is really important. This is something that John showed earlier today. The mobile internet, as you know, is ramping faster than any new communication technology we've ever experienced. For those of you that lived through the evolution of AOL, America Online, Netscape, NTT Docomo, they felt like they were happening really quickly. As the, gl the green line represents, this looks at the number of iPhone and iTouch users each quarter since the launch, and this is the fastest evolving thing uh, we have seen in, in technology. To drill down just a little bit more, we think that smartphone shipments will surpass PC shipments within two years. Um, that's a global stat, and when you take a step back and think about it, what that means for the way people will access the internet is a really big deal, and it's happening uh, very quickly. We think in the North American market, smartphones will outship feature phones within a year. As Hillary um, Schneider pointed out earlier today, it doesn't look quite the same outside the U.S. Uh, we'll probably be at about 30% smartphones to total handset shipped around the world at the same time when smartphones outship feature phones in, in the U.S. market. So if it seems as though things are, ra are ramping very quickly, they are. We're going through the fifth new computing cycle we've been in the last half a century. The mainframe computer, the mini computer, the personal computer, the desktop internet, the mobile internet. There are a lot of common themes to each of these cycles, but one thing that's most relevant for consumers and businesses is with each one of these cycles, there are 10 times more users or 10 times more devices than there were, uh, there were in the previous cycle, and the mobile internet shows every, every inclination to show that, to support, to support that sort of trend. Um, the clicker cannot keep up with my pace here, but here we go. Um, if we take a step back, we all know about the iPhone, we all know about the Android phones and the iPad and the products that we're using day in and day out, but something that's, that's more important in many respects is the fact that the underpinnings for the infrastructure to actually be ready to use this stuff have been building for a decade. Uh, as investors, we try to find markets where the consumer adoption has hit 20 to 25 percent penetration because that's usually when we're getting into the mainstream sweet spot usually the time public market investors make the most money in these markets. And 3G mobile, uh, 3, 3G network, 20% of global handset users will be using 3G networks in, in 2010. So we're hitting that global, um, that global inflection point. It's not all about 3G. It's an entire infrastructure, whether it's GPS, chipsets, Wi-Fi installations, 
uh, Bluetooth, um, Bluetooth enabled units. When we were looking at the mobile internet market back in 2007, 2008, it blew us away that these infrastructure components were growing at very high numbers and very high volumes at 40% plus in the throes of a massive recession as we were experiencing in 2008. And it just shows the power and the interest on the user side. There's a lot of discussion about mobile apps and mobile search, what's growing, what's not. This is data that just came out from Comscore. And usage of smartphone apps and mobile browser users have both doubled uh, year on year. The most popular app on the browser side, the most popular use case, if you will, on the browser side is search. Um, so a lot of growth in, in both categories. This just looks at data uh, that's, that's pre-Apple uh, developer conference. but gives you a sense of how many apps are being downloaded per device. iPhone, iTouch, now about 50 apps per device. Android phones, 20 plus. iPad, 12, still nascent and growing, growing very rapidly. This is just something so you have it, but the ramp is unprecedented. If we look at the different operating systems for smartphones in the market, the um, iPhone and Android on a unit basis are doing fine relative to the rest of the other players, but they're, they're punching way over their weight when it comes to actual usage of, of internet-related related content, which we think speaks well for the opportunity for growth in, in, for both of those, both of those operating systems. Um, this is data that's a little bit piecemeal. We've tried to figure out what do Android unit shipments look like vis-a-vis -vis iPhone shipments. We're mid-quarter for Google. We don't have all the information, but we've tried to take what they've had and just thread the needle and extrapolate a little bit. Uh, we know that the June quarter for Apple is, is not going to be its best quarter for iPhones, in part because they're, uh, they're, sh they're, they're shipping a new phone. But it looks as though Android phones may be at a run rate where they actually outship iPhones in the, in the, in the June quarter. And that's data from, from other sources uh, other than me, because I'm not the expert on it. Um, if we look at the Apple iPad, it is among the fastest growing new consumer computing devices ever only surpassed by the Nintendo Wii and Nintendo DS. And both the Nintendo Wii and Nintendo DS were in markets that had already been created, i.e. consoles and handheld gaming devices. The iPad is the fastest growing new thing um, of, its, of its type ever. Um, if we look at how people are using iPads versus how they use desktop PCs versus how they use smartphones, um, the tablet usage or the iPad usage is much more similar to desktop usage um, than it is on, on mobile devices when it comes to intensity of, of internet usage. Um, taking a step back, and I could spend a half an hour on this, and you'll be glad to know I won't, but it's interesting to go back and look at how computing um, graphical user interfaces and use cases have changed over the last 30 years or so. But we went from text input devices to graphical input and output devices to touch-based sharing devices, and whenever you have a new one of these things, um, a new use case and a new technology, you usually get um, tremendous, tremendous growth. And I'll skip by that because it'll take too long. But a thing that if we, if we think about our usage and how we, use, how we use these connected devices, in just two years, most of us expect always on access with super fast boot time, near zero latency access to nearly all information, and day-long plus battery life in very elegant portable devices. When you take a step back, you did not expect that one to two years ago. You not only do you expect it now, you, you demand it now. We're starting to see that roll into the enterprise as well. On innovation, unprecedented intensity, um, the US had been the laggard, uh, we'll call us the tortoise, if you will, in the mobile internet market. Japan was so much the leader, going back to 1999, 2000, 2001, with the NTT Docomo iMode product. Uh, it was a big deal in the first quarter of 2009 when the United States surpassed the largest 3G market in the world, Japan, to have the most number of users. Not only do we have the most number of users, the locus of innovation has moved from northern Europe to J Japan, northern Europe, China, uh, to the U.S., and I think it's going to be in the U.S. for a long, a long, time, to, a long time to come. Um, on the innovation front, uh, Epic has had an Apple. Um, Apple has had an epic. Uh, re re -in this is what happens when you're under hot lights. I can understand how people, I may have to take my hoodie off, but um, um, this is a, it's a natural impact. I'm not nervous, I'm totally fine. I'm just 95 degrees. Anyway, um, 
I'm going to spend two hours on this slide, but it's a, it, if those of you that run businesses, if you could say, I'm going to grow my core business and have a new product in two years that will account for 40% of my revenue, you'd say, bring it on. And Steve Jobs and the team at Apple have done exactly that. Uh, and it's, it's a big deal, and it speaks to the innovation. We're seeing innovation from incumbents, whether it's Apple, Google, Amazon, et cetera. We're seeing an unusually high level of innovation from new attackers, whether it's Facebook or Hulu or Groupon uh, or Tapulous. And we're seeing something I've never seen before, where co companies in different parts of the world are learning from one another's playbooks. Facebook is the, is the real identity uh, social network in the world and English-speaking countries. Tencent is the same in China, largely with virtual personalities. And Tencent is learning a lot from Facebook, and Facebook is learning a lot from Tencent uh, about how to grow their businesses, which is unique. Online advertising, I think, may be entering a golden age. Media time spent versus advertising spending is way out of whack. That will correct itself over time. CPMs on the internet are still way below other forms of, of, of advertising. That will correct itself. Google, with its paid click growth acceleration in the, for, in the first quarter, is showing that their matching and efficacy and efficiency in matching good ads with the right, right searches is improving, something we've been waiting for for a long time. As Hillary pointed out with Yahoo earlier today, with their 20% with display advertising growth in the first quarter and a 15% an acceleration in time spent on the home page to 15% year on year versus 8% a year ago, they're showing that their online targeting and personalization is absolutely working, finally. Um, if we look at Facebook, and I think Tom talked about this earlier today, I think this has one of the most under-monetized ad opportunities on the web. This looks at the um, products and brands based on number of, of likes or fans they have. Uh, Texas Hold'em has 19 million fans or people who like. Uh, Converse has 3 million. If you compare the CPMs that primetime or, or broadcast primetime TV would get for that same number of users. That demonstrates another big um, revenue opportunity, we think, for advertising. We take a step back, and there were talk, folks talked about this in, in earlier today. One of the questions I ask this looks at the top 100 ads, ad campaigns of the last 100 years per ad age. Um, many of you probably remember adverti advertising and commercials and, and, and jingles and mantras from your childhood. You don't remember a lot from the web. Um, and that's the challenge and the opportunity for the next five years or so. I personally think one of the best advertisers in the world is Steve Jobs, though he's never been in an agency. He's certainly done a pretty good job with his products. And now he has a bit of an agency. I think we're going to see a lot of, of new innovation in, in online advertising, which is going to help grow the revenue as well. Japan is our proxy market for the mobile market, showing us how the rest of the world is probably going to evolve. In Japan, mobile advertising revenue per user is $11 versus just a dollar six years ago. We'll see the same kind of trajectory in the other markets around the world. Uh, it's now about 105 degrees. I think the way they're going to keep me to 15 minutes is I'm going to faint. Um, <laughs> moving to online commerce, um, Amazon is, is showing revenue acceleration. Um, share gains are very powerful. I just want to spend a moment on Taobao, which is the leading online commerce company in China. Two interesting data points. Um, they have 190 million active users, and that compares with 114 million active users for Amazon.com and 90 million for eBay. So just showing the, the opportunity for the online market in China. Taobao packages account for nearly 50% of the packages shipped by China Post. Uh, in 2009. Think about that. It's the equivalent of eBay accounting for 50% of the U.S. Postal Service, FedEx, and UPS's um, packages. So um, certainly getting a lot of traction in China. Japan also shows us the potential for mobile commerce. 19% of fourth quarter revenue for Rakuten. Um, the, we're going to mispronounce every, every foreign company at the conference, but someone will get it right. 19% uh, of, of, of commerce for the, for the leading online shopping site in Japan is, is on mobile and growing. Communications, um, gaining social networking, clearly gaining share. Interesting data point. Time spent on social networking sites surpassed time spent an email in the November, Thanksgiving time of 2007. So it's not a new concept. It's been happening for a while. Um, cloud computing, I'm going to skip past this very quickly. You can find the slides at morganstanley.com slash techresearch. And Stacy will put them up on John's site in about four hours. Um, that's a jab. They can get up sooner if she works on it. But um, 
home users have been way ahead of enterprise users. We think one of the things that's happened with the smartphone, uh, the smartphone growth is that consumers are now going to their enterprises and saying, why can I do this on my, my smartphone and I can't connect with my enterprise the same way? So we're seeing an acceleration in enterprise adoption of cloud computing. And John, if you'll give me two more minutes, if you won't say no, I'll finish off on the last couple slides. On the what's new, no, no, go ahead. What's the translation of that? Half is no and half is yes, but I'm gonna keep going until he hooks me off. But um, the, the what's the future, it's just doing uh, new ways to do old things faster, better, and cheaper. We're seeing a big, a big revolution in what's going on. It'll just be more of the same. We'll be more, con more connected, it'll be more affordable, it'll be faster, easier to use, fun to use, access nearly everything, and very importantly, uh, longer, longer battery life. Uh, Tom Friedman said the world is flat. It's also increasingly in the palm of your hand. Um, and beyond technology, um, to paraphrase the title of the recent movie, it's complicated. The stock market is oftentimes the best indicator of where the economies are going. Uh, this green line looks at the S&P 500 performance since, which is, represents the U.S. market since June of 2007. It's definitely uh, tailed off in recent weeks, and if this continues for a while, it's probably not a bad, it's not a good indicator for the economy. Um, the European market is doing the same, and the um, Chinese market is showing the same pattern. Um, the only thing that's doing particularly well is gold, which is, as you know, a hedge against, um, a hedge against the economy. Um, stock market volatility, had, after a, a fairly subdued period for, um, for months, has shown an increase in vol is, has shown an increase in large part because people are concerned about the outlook on a go forward basis. We're living in uniquely challenging times. I've never seen anything like this in my career. Uh, debt levels are very high. Many many countries and consumers are over levered. Uh, the European Union is creating new challenges. Sovereign debt levels in Greece, Spain, Portugal, Ireland, and Italy are unsustainably high. The euro is down 19 percent versus the U.S. dollar year to date. Uh, there's an imbalance between supply and demand in real estate in China. I want to make sure we touch every part of the globe. It sort of happened in the U.S. first, moving to Europe, potentially to other markets. Uh, an increase in military incidences, incidents, a rise in government involvement, and an increase in unnatural disasters. And it's not just because you hear about them, because you get the tweets faster. Um, these are uniquely challenging times. One of the few growth areas is the area that, with some consistency, is the area that we, uh, that we all focus on. Uh, this is an eyesore for a reason. This looks at leverage, re leverage rates for all countries in the world. It's important for you guys if you do business in other countries. It's a good thing to have in the back of your, uh, in your quiver. And the last point, uh, and this is an American point, uh, and it looks at the P&L of the income statement of the United States of America. And if you look at our P&L, um, we are rapidly increasing the amount of entitlement spending um, that we need to do, and the income statement is absolutely out of whack. We had a negative 67% uh, profit margin in 2009 and a negative 15% profit margin in 2005 when things were actually better. And I bring that up not because I'm on a, uh, here to talk about um, the countries around the world, but it's relevant to all that we, that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And on that cheery note, I get to go to disclosure statements. There's one disclosure statement for every 10 slides. Uh, and with that, we're right back to where we're right back to being on schedule. Thanks a lot.